my name is Jim Trudeau. I'm a senior applications engineer here at Cypress. And today we're going to be talking about the peripheral driver library and how you can use FM parts to drive a motor. The PDL supports all FM parts, but today we're going to be using an S6E1B8 that has an FM0 Plus part on it. And what we're going to do, it has a potentiometer on the board, and we're going to use that to control the speed of a motor. This is actually a very simple demonstration of a very complicated peripheral called the multifunction timer. And we're going to take a look at what the multifunction timer does and its components, and then we're going to do it for real. The multifunction timer consists of five sub peripherals or components. The first of them is the free run timer. The free run timer drives all of the other peripherals. It provides the timing signal so that all of the peripherals that are involved in motor control will run um, synchronously. One of the components that the free run timer drives is the output compare unit. In its simplest form, the output compare unit has a value that it uses to compare against what the timer value is. And based on that, it will flip the signal, thus creating a PWM duty cycle that can drive a motor. Downstream from the output compare unit is a waveform generator. If we were using a three-phase motor, for example, we'd want to have waveforms, and it will generate the waveform based on the settings that we provide for the free run timer and the output compare unit. The multifunction timer also has an input capture unit, and the purpose of the ICU is to receive signals essentially from the outside world that you would wire into your system to control the motor. You might turn it on or off. Maybe there's an emergency stop signal that fires off on one of these pins and you'd be able to stop the motor. The fifth peripheral is the ADC start compare. In a complex motor like a three-phase motor or a brushless DC motor, you may have sensors that determine what the position of the motor is or provide information that you can use to control the motor operation. To get the signal from those sensors, you're going to need an ADC and you're going to want to control the timing of the data conversion very carefully. And so you can start the ADCs based on the motor control signal timer, which is the FRT. So that's how all of the pieces go together. It's really a complex part, and if you were doing three-phase motor control, you would be able to control the entire motor from a single MFT. Some FM parts support two or three MFTs, and so are capable of driving two or three three-phase motors. This particular part, the FM0 Plus on the S6E1B8, only has one MFT, so that's the one we're going to be using. In other videos in this series, we've talked about how to configure and use the PDL. And in a nutshell, you use a file called pdluser.h to determine what features of the PDL you're going to use. You then set up configuration structures for the peripherals that you're going to use. You initialize each of those peripherals by making an API call, and then you enable or start the peripheral, and then use the peripheral, all of those via API calls into the PDL function API. So you can start a scan, you can transmit data, you can clear an interrupt, you can get the status of what's going on, all by using PDL function calls. You don't need to know which register and which bit in which register controls those features. The PDL does that for you. So let's look at this for real. I built a project to drive this little motor using the PDL. So I started in the PDL installation in the Devices folder, and another video in this series shows you in detail how to create a custom project from scratch using the information that's in the Devices folder. What's in here by family, FM0 Plus and FM4, are the startup and configuration files that you need for every FM part. And then added in the necessary source files to use the PDL, we've got this project. Remember, we need to determine what are we going to use inside the PDL. We have to configure the PDL as a whole, and that's done in PDL user.h. So let's open that up. And this is the PDL user.h file. I'm going to be using an ADC. The ADC is going to read the signal, um, the voltage off the potentiometer. So I turned it on. So we're going to use ADC 0. There are three possible ADCs on this chip. We're going to use number 0. And I've turned that on. We also need the MFT. Now remember that the MFT is, in fact, a collection of parts. It has five other peripherals. Here in PDL user.h, 
are the settings that allow me to turn on or off any of the MFT peripherals. We are going to be using MFT0 because that's the only one that's on this chip. I need to use the free run timer, so I turn that on. And I'm going to use the OCU, so I turn that on. Notice I'm not using the waveform generator, so that's off. I'm not using the input capture unit, so that's off. And I'm not using the ADC compare, so that's off. So notice in the project, I've included the source file for the ADC. I've included the source file for the MFT FRT, that's the timer code. And here's the source file for the OCU. I've also included the general PDL.C file, so I've got all the source files that I need. I haven't touched any of this code. The only code that I wrote was in main.c. So let's take a look at that. Remember our process. We configured the PDL as a whole. I now need to configure the individual peripherals that I'm running. And so I have a call to set up the ADC and to set up the MFT. Let's go look at that code. Here's the code to set up the ADC. There are two configuration structures that I need to set up. One is for the ADC itself, and the other is for the scan. So I've declared those. I then zero out both of the structures. And here I set up the scan. This is the input channel that I'm going to be using. So I've, that's determined by the wiring on the board. So I've set that to match the pin that the potentiometer is connected to. I'm going to do a single conversion, meaning I will call and get a number. I will call and get a number rather than starting a process that repeatedly sends me numbers. And I'm not using a timer, I'm using software control. And then I set up the ADC itself. For example, I'm using least significant bit alignment on the data, and I set some values for controlling the sampling rate, how often are we going to be doing this. And those values are all set um, based on how the FM works, and you learn how to do this in the documentation. And then we initialize and enable the ADC. The ADC is good to go. There's another call to set up the MFT, so let's look at that code. I'm using the free run timer, so I've got a structure for that. And I'm using the OCU, and I've got a structure for that. We zero those out, and then we configure them. So, for example, the FRT can count in one of two modes. It can go up, down, or up, back to zero, up, back to zero, up. We're going to use up, down, count. And then I want to set this whole process up so that it operates at about 500 hertz. So I know that the peripheral clock on this board is 40 megahertz, which I've got from reading the technical documentation. And I set the divisor for the timer so that it will give me a signal at the right frequency and get me the results that I want. Then I initialize it. I'm not going to start it right away because I need to set up the OCU first, but I do set the count cycle, which is how high do I want this counter to go, and that's set again to give me about that 500 hertz signal that I want. Then the code configures the OCU. For example, we have a free run timer that's giving me my timing signal, and I'm going to connect FRT0 to the OCU. Once we're done setting up the OCU, I'm going to initialize it. So configure initialize, and then I'm going to start using it. And this is my first instance of using the OCU. It has a compare value, and I'm going to give it an initial compare value. As the code runs, the compare value will change based on the signal we get from the potentiometer. I'm going to enable it, and then I start everything going by calling FRT start. All right, so let's go back to the main loop and walk through what happens. So first we set up the ADC, then we set up both of the components that we're using inside the MFT, and then we start the motor spinning. And then while the motor is spinning, we're going to read the signal from the potentiometer. So we start an ADC scan, and then we wait until it's done. So we continually get the status of the ADC, and when it's finished, then we read the data out of the ADC's buffer. Now that's a 32-bit value, and the scan result is a 12-bit value that's hiding inside that 32 bits. So we have a function call to do that. We call ADC get scan data, and that returns us a 12-bit result that we store in scan result. Now that range of numbers is going to be from 0 to about 4,095. It's a 12-bit number. 
we need to transform that into a reasonable compare value based on how the timer is running. Just wrote a little code that does that transformation, essentially changing the range from 0 to 4,095 to something like 0 to 22,000. And that gives us um, our PWM duty cycle once we write that compare value. So real time, as the code is running, we're going to continuously update the compare value, and that's going to change the duty cycle of the motor. And then we check to see whether someone's pressed the user button, and that toggles the motor between stopping or running. OK, so the motor runs to begin with, and let's run this code. So we'll click the debug button. Takes a moment to download the code. And once it's downloaded, we're stopped at the first line of main. So let's start the code running on the board. We'll click the Go button. And the motor is trying to run, but the signal is so low that it's not powerful enough to run the motor. But if we crank the potentiometer, now that motor's humming. She's cooking. And we can turn it down. and stop it. In a real-world motor control application, you would write far more complicated code. Remember, the MFT is a complex peripheral. It supports multiple timers, multiple OCUs, multiple ADC compares, and you can mix and match those as required to drive an entire three-phase motor for every MFT that's supported on the chip. The other point is that the PDL supports every peripheral in the FM family, FM0, FM3, and FM4. And you can write your code once, and it will run on any FM part that supports the peripherals that you're using. How do you learn how to use the PDL for all of these peripherals? You use the documentation. The PDL documentation will give you an overview of what every driver is and how to configure it, and give you all the details that you need about every macro, every function, every structure, and all of the fields that you need to configure, initialize, enable, and drive an FM peripheral. Programming a microcontroller might not be all that easy, but the PDL sure makes it easier. Thanks for watching.